China has launched a trade war, hoping to crush Australia. But Australia refuses to back down. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. The Chinese Communist Party has been ramping up a trade conflict with Australia. It came after the Australian government called for an independent investigation into the origins of the coronavirus. And also spoke out to defend Hong Kong's autonomy and human rights in China. So the Chinese regime has put tariffs on about $20 billion worth of Australian exports, like wine, seafood, and coal. But instead of backing down, members of the Australian government are fighting back. That includes Senator for Tasmania Eric Abetz. But Abetz is also controversial. He's been accused of racism in the Australian media. It came after three Chinese Australians were testifying before a government committee, and Senator Abetz asked them if they were willing to condemn the Chinese Communist Party dictatorship. Is condemning the dictatorship the same as being racist against Chinese people? And what implications does this have for other Australians who want to go up against the Chinese dictatorship? Senator Abetz joins me now to talk about it. Thanks for joining me today. I know the Chinese Communist Party has been uh, launching a pretty aggressive trade war on Australia, and to show my support, I've been stocking up on Vegemite. I hope that helps. <laughs> and Australian wine, I hope. Yeah. All right, so recently, uh, let's just get to the big topic. Uh, you asked Chinese Australians testifying in the Senate to denounce the Chinese Communist Party. Why did you do that? First of all, allow me to contextualize. There were three separate groups of witnesses of Chinese ethnicity. I only asked one group whether they were prepared to condemn the dictatorship, and that was on the basis that they had presented to the committee as thought leaders, as academia, as think tank contributors. And there had been a, an academic writing about these matters, one Professor Clive Hamilton, who basically said that if you ask certain people whether they're willing to condemn the dictatorship, you'll be, one, labelled a racist, and secondly, they will offer sufficient criticism to retain credibility, but they will never outright condemn. And straight out of the textbook, that is exactly what occurred. Might I also say I had received information from the Chinese diaspora in Australia that they were concerned about the interference by the Chinese Communist Party within the body politic of Australia and within the Chinese diaspora, their community organisations always wanting to uh, be in control and manipulating things to the benefit of the Chinese Communist Party dictatorship. And so these people who presented as thought leaders, I thought it was appropriate. Can I also indicate that uh, one of them uh, in their submission started off by saying Australian politics is too white. In other words, engaging in the politics of identity and in complete contradistinction to what Martin Luther King had pleaded with the American people, namely that people be judged on character, on values and beliefs, and not on the colour of their skin. And it was from there that we then developed a discussion about values and beliefs. And I then asked whether or not the dictatorship would be condemned by these people, keeping in mind this is a dictatorship that has one million of its own people in a concentration camp, that imprisons people because they're house Christians, because they're Falun Gong practitioners, because they support the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong. This is a brutal regime that in fact engages in organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience, and it is a regime worthy of condemnation. Well, since you knew the uh, accusations of racism were pretty much guaranteed to follow, and they did follow, uh, how have you been responding to that? I have been uh, responding on the basis of calling out the oppressor on behalf of the oppressed, 
is not racism. What is racism is trying to knock out the Uyghurs from Xi'an province, where uh, the concentration camps and the other repressions that the regime is undertaking, that is racism. Um, and look, it's easy to label somebody a racist, and then what they try to do is put you on the defensive. My view is, do you support or do are you willing to condemn this brutal dictatorship? And each and every time I simply say, I stand with the oppressed, with the Uyghurs, with the House Christians, with the Falun Gong practitioners, with the pro-democracy movement, and I'm sure none of those people would label me a racist for condemning that dictatorship. So should all Australians denounce the Chinese Communist Party? Look, um, it's more for, I think, thought leaders to uh, consider whether or not they should engage in condemnation. My view is that they should, because on any humanitarian or other criteria, the dictatorship needs to be condemned. Um, we cannot, in a civilised world, seek to turn a blind eye to such an ugly, repressive regime. Their values of the dictatorship are in complete contrast to those values that we hold dear in Australia and in the United States, for that matter, amongst the freedom-loving countries of the world. We have to take a stand. And if we don't, we do a great disservice to all those people that are currently in concentration camps and prisons under the Chinese dictatorship. So, yes, we should be condemning the regime, calling them out and bringing them to account. All right, let's go to uh, the big picture right now. So the Chinese Communist Party has been secretly infiltrating Australia for years. When did you first become aware of the problem? That'd be a good question uh, for me to think about. I, a number of years ago, I became concerned about the Chinese Communist Party dictatorship's infiltration into Australia. And uh, I was one of those, I confess, that thought that China, the mainland of China, would go the same way as Taiwan. Namely, Taiwan started off as a military dictatorship under Chiang Kai-shek, and then slowly but surely evolved with Western support into now a fully fledged functional democracy. There were very good signs of that as China was beginning to open up, but under the current presidency, Xi Jinping, he has taken the road of liberalization backwards, become more repressive and uh, more dictatorial. He's made himself president for life, He's uh, at the latest National Congress when they have the emotion about the unification of China. The word peaceful reunification of China, that was removed from the uh, um, motion. So these are the subtle changes where you've got Xi Jinping saying that Marx was the greatest thought leader ever and that he's wanted to style himself on the basis of of Joseph Stalin, the most heinous of the Soviet dictators. So when you've got all those things coming out over recent years, there had to come a time where I had to come to the conclusion, Eric, the liberalisation that we were all hoping for is not happening. In fact, it is regressing and we have to take a stronger stand against this dictatorship. So a few years ago, I became quite concerned. Just as an aside, under former Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull and his Foreign Minister Julie Bishop, they were proposing an extradition treaty with China. And I got up in the party room and uh, I did not make myself popular at the time. I opposed the extradition treaty on the basis that there was no equivalence, even at that time, between the Chinese legal system and the Australian legal system, and therefore I opposed the extradition treaty. I was vilified for it at the time. Today, not a single person would be promoting an extradition treaty with China, and I think that is how the consciousness within Australia has changed. 
but those of us that were at the vanguard of calling it out were vilified at the time, but I think we have now been justified in our warnings. Well, as you say, things have really turned around in Australia as far as viewing the Chinese Communist Party as a threat. There were the foreign interference laws, uh, open discussion of the crimes of the Communist Party, uh, a call to investigate the origin of the coronavirus. Uh, how has the Chinese Communist Party responded? Well, the Chinese uh, Communist Party dictatorship has responded to us in a fairly aggressive and uh, robust way. I would call it an ugly way, some of their commentary referring to Australia as being a bit of a nuisance like chewing gum on the sole of your shoe, uh, making all sorts of uh, uh, commentary along those lines, and then in practical terms, imposing a tariff on our barley, claiming that our premium wines are being dumped, then our forestry products being uh, stopped at the border, rock lobster being left on the tarmac to uh, die and as a result not be saleable. Uh, and so the consequences go on. That said, Norway has suffered similar issues when it sought to support a, a dissident artist from China. Um, I understand the Czech Republic has suffered similarly. Canada has suffered similarly. And what this belligerent dictatorship seeks to do is intimidate. And that is why in recent times I've called for all the freedom loving countries of the world to come together and say, enough is enough Chinese dictatorship. We will not allow you to try to pick us off one by one, but the freedom loving countries will stand united in solidarity with each other. And I think if we can do that, we will be successful in bringing the dictatorship back into the realms of some sort of decency and being a good, decent international player. So do you think the general population in Australia know the extent of the China problem? I think most Australians are instinctively concerned I don't think they're fully aware of the extent. And I must say, I was surprised when uh, the organisation of which I'm a member, IPAC, the International Parliamentary Alliance on China, uh, helped reveal the list of all the names of people that have been infiltrating companies, consuls, embassies, etc., of a whole lot of countries around the world, that the extent of the operation is very, very concerning. But each and every time the Chinese dictatorship becomes more belligerent, they're just sending some Navy ships down within 200 uh, nautical miles of the Australian coastline. Those sort of things uh, tell the Australian people that the Chinese dictatorship, no matter what their protestations, are clearly not friends of Australia, but even more importantly, are not friends of the freedom-loving countries of the world. Do you think the coronavirus changed things? I, I think the coronavirus issue changed things on a number of fronts. One, Australia's calling for an international investigation saw the ire of the dictatorship focused on Australia, and then they've come out with all the quite bizarre assertions. One, it started in Italy, then it started in the United States. Then it came into China via Australian beef. Yet yeah, every day there's a new story. And the idea that it doesn't match with other stories is of no consequence. Because if you don't have a free press, your president and other people aren't, aren't going to be questioned about these things. The other thing that I think concerns a lot of Australians and indeed people right around the world is how the dictatorship was able to initially manipulate the World Health Organization and Dr. Tedros to put out the Shanghai Beijing propaganda in relation to uh, the coronavirus. And, uh, you know, first of all, we were told it was not communicable between a people, that it was racist, it closed down borders, and uh, now, you ask, where on earth did all this misinformation come from? It's all traceable back to the Chinese dictatorship that were in denial. And because of their denial 
and their propaganda being swallowed by the World Health Organization, we now have a crisis around the world a lot, lot worse than it need be. And I think that has opened the eyes of many people within Australia, but all around the world, to the sort of behaviours and manipulations that the Chinese dictatorship engage in. Now, I know there's been a lot of pushback from the Australian business community about the economic damage of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chinese regime. Why do you think that is, and do you think it'll be enough to stop the momentum? Look, uh, money talks, and uh, some people are more concerned about their dollars. Uh, I'm very pleased that the Australian Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, continually talks about Australian values and beliefs and that our ethics are not for sale. And so because we stand for human rights, because we are willing to condemn one million citizens being in a concentration camp, because we want a full international investigation of COVID, if that has economic consequences for us as a payback, then that is a matter of great regret. But I think the Australian people are up to it. And I detect that other countries in the world will say, well, if they don't want your wine, we'll buy it. I know India is very interested in our coal. And let's be very clear what the Chinese dictatorship is doing with these trade uh, barriers against Australian products at the moment. They are cutting off their nose to spite their face. There was the only basis on which countries trade with each other is for mutual benefit. So the Chinese buy our products because of the quality of the product, reliability of supply, and the affordability. It's not to do us a favor, it's for those three reasons. So if they all of a sudden stop seeking our products, they are denying their own population the benefit of high quality, reliable supply, and affordable prices. And so this is what a dictatorship does, becomes belligerent and is willing to do things to punish others whilst also punishing their own population. So this is a uh, game that they're playing, which ultimately will test the resolve of the Australian people and the Australian government. But I trust we are up to it because there are certain values and principles that simply are not for sale. Now, if the United States were to no longer take a hard line on China, do you think Australia could go it alone? If the freedom-loving countries of the world were to, to desert Australia and the uh, United States clearly would be a major player in that, that would be a matter of uh, great concern. But I cannot see that occurring under uh, President Biden or President Trump. Uh, uh, I dare say it will be President uh, Biden. I don't want to get into that debate, but irrespective of uh, the party or the person that might be leading the United States, the friendship and the unity between our two countries has always been exceptionally strong. And might I add, from the Australian perspective, that has been the case, irrespective of it being a Labor government or, as we currently have, a Liberal government. And what do you think uh, the other democratic countries of the world can learn from uh, the situation Australia has found itself in with the Chinese Communist Party? What it shows is that if you take a principled stand, the Chinese dictatorship will seek to punish you, and it's a test of resolve. And therefore, if you are a freedom-loving country of the world that's not currently being punished, uh, by China, then you should stand in solidarity because at the end of the day, China cannot punish each and every one of the freedom-loving countries of the world. But what it does show is that there are consequences from this dictatorship if you take a principled ethical stand. What it also shows is how unprincipled and how unethical the communist dictatorship in China is. and. Basically, if you let Australia um, loose and cut us loose, guess what? You'll be next. And that is why it makes good sense for every single country that believes in freedoms, that believes in human rights, that believes in the rule of law, 
to stick together, to stand in solidarity and say, if you pick on Australia, you're picking on Norway, you're picking on the United States, you're picking on New Zealand, you're picking on India, you're picking on Japan. And if that's the case, then clearly China will need to back off. And that is my hope and prayer. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait till I can go back to Australia. A pleasure, and it would be a delight to welcome you to Australia. Thank you. Take care. And thank you for watching. And thanks heaps to all the Aussies out there for sticking it out as your government faces blowback from standing up to the Chinese Communist Party. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.